Five phrases the narcissist uses to blame shift. It is fundamental that we remain unaccountable for our actions. Accountability is a fetter on our control, and therefore a threat to it. One of the most effective ways of avoiding this accountability, provoking you, leaving you exasperated and stunned, is to engage in blame shifting. Blame shifting is used by all narcissists as a form of manipulation in our ceaseless quest to put down any threat that you pose to our control and enable us to maintain our control over you. Not only is it the case that unconsciously, for lesser and mid-range and consciously for greater and ultra, that we believe we are entitled to complete immunity for what we say and do, occasioned by our innate superiority, we also believe it to be necessary for us to be able to gather fuel as often as effectively as do. We cannot be held to be account. We're never to blame. It is always your fault. If we were slowed down by having to make meaningful and genuine apologies, always explain ourselves, account genuinely for what we have done, and also accept responsibility and culpability for the consequences, this would not only affect our control, but would absorb far too much time that would be better spent in the pursuit of fuel. Hampering us in such a way would mean that we would repeatedly be challenged by these threats to our control, weakening us, and furthermore, reducing our capacity to fuel gathering would weaken us further again. Accordingly, the ability to escape accountability through blame shifting and other manipulations, but in this instance, blame shifting, is necessary, so in effect we remain sleek, effective, and light of foot, for us never to be concerned about accountability and also to never allow responsibility to rest with us. As with many of our machinations, this approach also allows us to gather fuel in itself by the imposition of blame upon you. By blaming you, and you react in an astonished and outraged manner, your truth-seeking trait offended by the lies that we are saying when we blame shift, Rather than walk away and realise this is where the way the narcissist behaves, you are drawn into trying to tell us that we're wrong, trying to prove to us that we are incorrect, to demonstrate your innocence. And therefore, all you do is end up providing us with fuel and possibly challenging us further, resulting in us having to respond again and again and again until we've asserted control over you. Ultimately, if you will not lie down and accept what we're telling, we will just walk away and assert control by withdrawal leaving you standing there, open-mouthed and staggered at the audacity and the sheer brass neck that we exhibit by failing to accept responsibility for our wrongdoings. Remember, the lesser and mid-range narcissist is blinded to their wrongdoings. The lesser just does not see that they have done anything wrong. The mid-ranger can understand why people will say that they have done wrong, but they always have an excuse, an explanation or a reason. Thus, they get rid of that attempt to pin accountability on them. The greater and the ultra does not see that they are at fault. We, of course, recognise that our behaviour, from your perspective, is viewed as problematic, but from our perspective, we justify what we do. We justify it in a different way to that of the mid-ranger. Instead, the greater and ultra simply forms the view, you are in our way, we are not to be halted, Therefore, you are at fault. Our innate superior superiority drives us forward. The ends always justify the means. If you are hurt as a consequence of that, so be it. Don't get in our way. Don't hamper our need for control. Don't interfere with our need for the prime aims. To help you understand the nature of different instances of blame shifting, here are five examples with commentary also. Number one, what do you expect me to do about it? A delicious, subtle piece of blame shifting to begin with. The narcissist does not even state that we regard it as your fault, your responsibility or your liability with this question, but the implication is clear. We expect you to do something about it because we do not do responsibility. Your role is to clear up after us, and you signed up to that role when you accepted our overtures. Did you miss that term of the contract? Don't blame us. That's your fault. You should have read it more carefully. 
A narcissist will regularly brag about how brilliant and special he is. Dependent on the school of narcissism. He or she will talk about the fact they have many talents and that they would be able to remedy many situations within moments. They have come to save the day. But notwithstanding this stance that the narcissist adopts to the world at large, he or she's not going to do that with you. Not a chance. The narcissist is not here to pick up the pieces after you, although the narcissist expects you to do so for them repeatedly. We can do as we like, and you are obliged to make good the damage that we cause. Collect the broken pieces of crockery, apologise to the shell-socked friend after an outburst, try to solve the financial headache that we have left you with. If you have caused a problem, and let's face it, it is always your fault anyway, you cannot expect us to do something about it. We are above such menial tasks. We have much more important and bigger things to attend to. Such as, I don't have to explain myself to the likes of you. If I cause the problem, which in reality the narcissist does, we're not going to do anything about it, because if we had to, that would mean that we are accountable, and that hinders our control. Number two, deal with it. A haughty and contemptuous remark, beloved pr primarily of greater and upper mid-range. That's the way it is, and you had better get used to it. This haughty declaration is part of the course for our sense of entitlement to do as we please, whenever we choose with whomsoever we select. We bulldoze through everything, and you have just got to put up with it. You can't walk away. We will not allow that to happen. Issuing this barked instruction at you is an effective way of upsetting you. It is telling you that you are useless and you should just be getting on with the situation rather than complaining about it. You shouldn't be complaining. You should have already guessed that you needed to sort the situation out. That's your role. Don't ask us for help, because we just do not have the time for this Mickey Mouse nonsense. Number three, you caused this to happen. We like to maintain that we act with the omnipotence of a god, but how many times have you found that you have somehow caused something to happen so we suggest that you actually exercise the powers of a deity? Everything is your fault. You caused it to happen. You made it go wrong. Our late arrival, your fault. Our failure to remember something, your fault. Our infidelity for the sixth time was wholly as a consequence of what you have done. If you gave me more sex, I wouldn't have to look elsewhere. If you put out more often, I wouldn't have to go and sleep with other people. If you weren't you, I wouldn't have to go and have sex with other individuals. At its most brutal, this declaration is issued without any explanation as to why it is that you caused the problem to arise. We say that it is the case, therefore that must be right. Does this exchange seem familiar to you? Why is that the case? Just is. But why? Because I say so. Other than our kind, who comes out with such bold and brief assertions bereft of reality or explanation from your perspective? That's right, children. Such comments as those are most likely to be found amongst lesser and lower mid-range. That tells you all you need to know about their mentality when they accuse you of being the one that has caused the problems. If you are fortunate enough to be given some kind of explanation... It makes perfect sense when viewed from our perspective, although it will not from yours. That is deliberate of the narcissism. It wants you to feel astonished, bewildered and annoyed at our sheer audacity to make the connection between our wrongdoing and your causation. This allows us to assert control and gather fuel from you. If you were more loving, I wouldn't go elsewhere. What do you mean by that? I couldn't be any more loving towards you. Oh, that's right deny it is anything to do with you and make me out to be the bad person. Well, it is you who have the affair, caused by you. How? I've already told you. If you cannot accept that, there is no point continuing with this conversation. Welcome to the circular conversation, which is a manifestation of blame shifting. You get no answer, no acceptance of blame. All you get is a tenuous, from your perspective but not from ours, explanation as to why our wrongdoing is all down to you. Number four. Why do you have to spoil everything? A cousin of the third shirking of responsibility above, but with an added layer of blame. In the previous example, you have caused the problem, although you may not have necessarily intended it. With this statement, we are telling you that not only is the problem not of our doing, it is your fault. And guess what? 
you meant to do it because you are such an awful and horrible person, as after all, we have just painted you black. The narcissist's rampant paranoia causes the narcissist to believe that you are out to get us, to topple us, and that you are plotting to unseat us as a consequence of our behaviour towards you during devaluation. That is why, whenever anything goes wrong, you are the architect of that misfortune, as we perceive that you have purposefully set out to cause a problem for us, driven by your innate nastiness and jealousy. Number five. Why do you make my life so hard? This is blame shifting alongside a pity play, most likely used by mid-range narcissists, particularly middle middle range type A, middle middle range type B, and lower mid-range. Poor us, put upon by you and your terrible behaviours. This is often thrown at you when you begin to wise up to the narcissist's manipulations, and either through choice or out of sheer exhaustion, you are no longer engaging with the narcissist's provocations and machinations. What the mid-range narcissist is actually saying to you here is, why are you making it so hard for me to control you? Why are you making it so hard for me to get fuel from you? Though, of course, he doesn't realise that's what he's doing. Your failure to play ball and do what we want is causing us to expend more energy in order to get the negative fuel from you. And in accordance with the narcissist's outlook as a victim, you because you're so awkward and so horrible, are doing this entirely on purpose to make the mid-range narcissist's life so hard. The mid-range narcissist needs to get to that fuel, needs to control you, and you should be helping them, not hindering them. And therefore, is it any wonder that they lash out at you as they do, because you are horrible and you make their lives far more difficult and hard than they should be or once did. And accordingly, this is yet another manifestation of the blame-shifting. Five examples of blame shifting. Recognize them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.